information on some basic rules of the game. The use of the word game originates with the higher selves. The Empire and the Dark do not consider it a game in any way and do not appreciate the reference. Game is used because of the challenges and object, to overcome all the Empire's best technology and manipulation to regain your identity, final incarnation, gather huge amounts of sensory experiences slash emotional experiences and develop wisdom. It is a challenge in that you begin with no memory of who you are and have to regain it by means your own higher self decides. There is no single path to this enlightenment but there are many false paths put there by the Empire and the Dark to keep you from finding yourself, religion, for example. Every higher self will succeed, some faster and some slower, but all will eventually succeed. To find out what you need to do, you must access your higher self. Robert Monroe developed the key to this. It is to access a level of consciousness that Monroe called Focus 12. That's how I learned and I know no other way. It's a matter of going within instead of without. When Monroe told the one group I was in how to do it, no one, except me, was interested in doing so. This is something a final incarnation really wants to do, access the higher self. It cannot be done by someone for you as only you, as your dominant and final incarnations, can have this access and dominance may not consciously realize they've been there, during sleep, and less psychic oriented. The material I've been releasing has not been released publicly for thousands of years. You can find threads of it in Credo Mutway's material in Robert Monroe's books, for example. This material is highly suppressed and you can see why. Val is to be honored for putting it out for access to anyone. Even if they aren't ready to handle it, it will have an effect on their spirit which will assist in their future. This material, in its form on Val's site, is unique and the vast majority of the information has never appeared elsewhere. It is not in the interest of the Empire that you know these things for it is spirit, not body oriented. That this information is out now should tell you something about Earth's immediate future. Think on that. I have told you about simultaneous and sequential incarnations and some of the implications of each. However, for those higher selves involved in the game, there is one constant, all pre-third density memories are kept from the incarnations until the third density path is complete. This is why even though the sequential incarnations retain their past, third density incarnational life memories, they have to build from a clean slate with a first incarnation. With each following incarnation, more information is added. The simultaneous incarnations also start third density with a clean memory slate in order to participate in the game. But this group is adding to the higher self's memories from all incarnations at once, scattered throughout Earth or third density time periods. In both cases no pre-game memories are lost, just hidden. What can work against spiritual advancement is the desire for physical immortality, a passion for the Orion Empire. But, when you look at reptilian royals, who are fanatics about cloning and life extensions, they don't advance spiritually. The Orion Empire reptilians are pretty stagnant spiritually, however this does serve a purpose in the game. It is not for me to say more on their path as our concern is our simultaneous path. Just know it all works out in the end. Another negative on the sequential path, from a simultaneous point of view, is that they tend to choose reincarnation in the same star group, dot i.e., Pleiadian, Tau Ceti, etc. They don't have the vast variety of Earther incarnations that simultaneous incarnates here jump around in. This severely cuts down on experiences. There is also far less gender jumping incarnations among them. They can get comfortable in either male or female bodies and rarely hop into the other. This is one of the reasons why the Arans of Teijida, Pleiadian, are homophobic. Needless to say, those higher selves who don't choose simultaneous paths are definitely much less adventurous. The game is far more complex and there are certain segments of it you must discover on your own at some point in your progression. That the simultaneous incarnates are developing so rapidly towards spiraling out, thus winning, the game and leaving the sequentials to slowly progress on their own is significant. When the Earther experience is completed, all Earther higher selves will have proceeded to new levels while the sequentials continue along on their path minus the Earther faction. That should give you something to think about. The game and the players. As I wrote in Changing the Future, the game's functions are set and only you can free yourself from the game, thereby winning. Just as when you play a board game, there are rules and certain things that must slash will occur during the play of the game. The same goes for the third density game. The two player groups are the simultaneous and the sequential higher selves. These groups are further subdivided within themselves. With the simultaneously incarnating, fast track, higher selves, 
Each individual higher self operates as an individual unit with experiences, events, and time periods chosen by each higher self to operate within the game's parameters. Within the sequential higher selves, they operate as a group and rarely, if ever, change into another group. Hence, you have the Reptilian Faction, the Syrian Faction, the Andromedon Faction and so on. In almost all cases, they proceed slash advance as a planet or group. This is very slow because each waits for the others to progress at a planetary rate. Earther higher selves progress independently at their own speed. Not proceeding as a group is daunting to the sequentials as well as not retaining conscious memory of Shim's other third density lives. The one time that a higher self can change sides is if that higher self decides to enter the earther higher self path with all the benefits and the liabilities associated with that path. This type of switching sides is allowed in the game. It does not occur very often. Due to the very nature of simultaneous incarnations, it is obvious that a simultaneous can never regress to a sequential path. That the sequential group stays within a certain race and progresses as a planet, at the minimum, shows much, to simultaneous incarnates, about their limitations. Yes, they have all incarnation memories, but their experiences are limited to that race and racial development. The one element that all sequentials have in common is fear. In this case, the fear is being born into each incarnation without memories of other incarnations. It is a courageous higher self that takes the simultaneous path, as Robert Monroe said. Simultaneous incarnates choose all the different races on Earth and can experience segments of the various alien cultures vicariously through the races that the alien cultures engineered here on Earth after the Orion Empire did their genetic thing to ancient Earthers. This is all part of the game. Simultaneous incarnations include black African groups, Asian varieties, various European cultures and so on. Each different Earth culture was formed by copying alien races who tampered with Earther humans eons ago. This is an enormous advantage over the single race slash evolve as a planet path that the sequential incarnates advance in. Much of the game's strategies involve working against the simultaneous incarnates. The sequentials use all manner of blocks slash obstacles to keep this group from winning at the game. However the game is geared for the simultaneous to win by departing from the game before the sequentials. The main burden for the simultaneous incarnate is to regain your spiritual identity. Huge clues for your spiritual identity are found within the laws of the universe. Once you discover your spiritual identity and live it, you are well on your way to graduating. If you intellectually know it, but choose not to live it, you still have a way to go in your development. The sequential aliens will come in second place, in the game, but they, too, will eventually graduate and the third density game will be over. Lots for you to think about here. The Game and the Players Part 2 While I've given you more on the game, from a galactic viewpoint, I now will give you more information on the game players, the higher selves. You may have heard that the reptilians are the oldest race in the galaxy. You have heard that there are many races that are far older than Earthers. Earthers are considered as having far to go to reach these aliens in most areas, in all areas if you were to believe aliens. Now, get ready for a different perspective. It's sequential versus simultaneous incarnations in this spotlight. Sequential incarnating higher selves have one incarnation at a time, retaining conscious memories of their incarnations at birth. This, as one can see, is a slow process of development. Simultaneous incarnations occur in all time periods since the genetic alteration of ancient Earthers, thus allowing that individual higher self to receive tremendous inputs of information, emotions, and sensory experiences at the same time. This is the fast track of development. The caveat here is that the incarnating higher self will have no memory of who Shim is when Shim begins the Earther path, but will have to find ways to relearn who Shim is. So, here you have an ancient history of sequential incarnation slowly gathering information and, mostly, controlled experiences. Due to these sequential incarnations genetic tampering with ancient Earther humans, a window of opportunity had opened up for those higher selves daring enough to risk the challenge that we know as the Earther Incarnational Path. This rapid advancement has spooked the aliens and the polarity addicts. Various methods are being used at this time to try and halt or reverse the advancements made. They know what the 2012 period brings and they would like to undo it. When the Earther Third Density period is over, these successful higher selves will move into higher densities to gather vast, new experiences. Meanwhile, those who prefer the slower, safer path will continue to their own conclusion much farther down the road. After the Earther graduation, Earth will be off-limits to aliens as the planetary spirit reaches Shim's own full potential. Alien races proceed as a group. Everyone is pretty much at the same level. 
Earther humans proceed individually, thus you have a wide variety of people at all times in history. Some alien groups would like us to believe that we have to mesh as a whole and become as they are. This is interference by the sequential higher selves that must be ignored. Anything or anyone who tries to get you to change your higher self's path is playing a game action of derail the simultaneous. That final and dominant incarnations are spread over most time periods as part of the protection so that the sequential aliens cannot swoop down and break game rules. As stated in other materials in Matrix 5, if one of them does try to break game rules, the individual higher self will interfere directly to prevent an unwarranted change of Shim's plan. Think of the difference in the two incarnational paths this way, the ultimate role-playing game with a twist. Sequential incarnations are playing a single game, role, at a time. Simultaneous incarnations are playing hundreds and hundreds of games, roles, at the same time. I have had over 1,600 incarnations, so my higher self is involved in 1,600 plus different role-playing games at one time and processing all of the experiences learned from them. This means that one higher self, who has had sequential incarnations for millions of years, can be experientially surpassed by another higher self who has been in Earther incarnations for only thousands of years. The aliens may like to have us think that technology is connected to advancement, but this is not true. It's spiritual development that counts, not technology. Hence, we have the Earth quarantine while the alien meddlers still meddle. The Earther experience seems to be concluding around 2012, while the sequential incarnational path will continue until it reaches its own conclusion. This gives you something to think about, a whole new perspective on the game of third density. Multi-density experiential pathways in Earth incarnation. Sixth density, etc. Advanced experiential patterns. Fifth density. Higher selves choosing individual progression paths, fast. With simultaneous third density incarnations. Higher selves choosing group progression paths, slow. With sequential third density incarnations. Fourth density upper. Independent activity focus 27 no religious belief systems. Fourth density lower. Belief system realities based on earth experience on fourth density in proximity to the planet. These will eventually be disused and fade. Third density. HS experience in third density universe populated predominantly by sequential incarnations, hive slash group slash race progressions, and more. Third density. Earth surface culture and interpenetration from sequential polarities, minions 65% and sequential and simultaneous incarnational interaction, with the culture patterned after sequential, conform, we are all the same, etc., pathways which stifle unique individualism, not group compatible, which gives HS with simultaneous incarnational path unique experiential opportunities in the game originally created by higher selves in the beginning. Third density. Minions animal slash nature spirit expressions of planetary spirit path. Third density. Planet Earth, physical structure of planet and ground. Third density. Planetary spirit HS, evolutionary path system tied to sun HS. End game, Earth and higher selves. As I've written in Matrix V Gold Edition, we are in end game as simultaneously incarnating higher selves. We are rapidly nearing our exit and advancement to fantastic new levels and densities. I was asked a question which was very good, what will happen in the game when we leave and sequential path higher selves decide that they want the simultaneous experience? Just as we, simultaneous path incarnates, are in endgame, so is Earth's planetary spirit also in Shim's version of endgame on the nature path. Once we are gone and Earth is cleansed, Earth will be out of reach of third density gamers. While Earth is currently the simultaneous path planet in this galaxy, it is not the final simultaneous path planet nor is it the first simultaneous planet. Yes, there have been others before and there will be many others after Earth. This is part of the game and the progression of it. At one time we were all sequential path higher selves. At one time we worked against those on their simultaneous path just as there are aliens now working against us. It's all part of the game. We advance at our own pace. We also tend to hang around with other higher selves who are like-minded. You will most likely discover that when your higher self chose the simultaneous path that one, two, or several others jumped ship with you. After our group has gone forward into new and fascinating areas slash densities, the game in third density will continue. Eventually other sequential higher selves will get the itch and want more. This is their opening to move to a simultaneous path. When this occurs, 
a new planet will be set aside in a different part of the galaxy for them to develop slash play a simultaneous incarnates and gain what they need to graduate the game. Our group will be long gone. Maybe the next simultaneous planet will be in a light polarity sector of the galaxy while ours is in a dark sector, as you know from M5. Just because we are in endgame here, doesn't mean it is endgame for the entire third density. Not at all. That particular endgame is very far off on a timeline scale, but then time itself is an illusion. It is our endgame that counts. It is in Matrix V Gold Edition that you will have the keys that are necessary for you to break your experiential loops and exit the game. These high numbers of keys are not available in any other book currently in third density, although you can get them from the astral copy of M5 in the library on level 27. I have received emails from several who did indeed get their copy this way. Your concentration should be on your own path and circumstances surrounding your role in the game and your progression out of it. Details of previous simultaneous path planets may be of an assist to you after you have graduated and if you seek out that data. However, for now, just know that we are not the Alpha Simultaneous Planet nor are we, by far, the Omega Simultaneous Planet. I will tell you, though, that we are much closer to the Alpha than the Omega. The knowledge waiting for you when you are ready is astounding. Meanwhile, continue to do what you need to do in your current incarnation. The information you gather, while it may not be of use to you now, is being stored in your higher self. Endgame Sequential Plans, America and More I spoke a lot about the sequentialization of Earth in the graduation key. You will find that I continue that thread on this site as well, building upon what you read in Vol 2. With the American Empire seeking global dominance and the submission of all to the will of Washington, you should consider their propaganda tactics and how they are different from most previous empires. Note the aura that the Darksiders in Washington love to generate, America is good and anyone who disagrees with America is bad. This is not a new concept, but was purposely generated a long time ago to advance the sequentialization of Earth. It is how this concept is being used by American Darksiders today that puts a new slant on that tactic. Sequentialization must begin with one country and what better country than a sequentially generated one? Enter the United States. The statue of ancient goddess, Semiramis, standing in New York Harbor encourages the global riffraff to enter. This was great public relations especially in the 19th and early 20th centuries. At that time, when the dark side sequentials in Washington were driving the Native Americans from their homelands, there was a huge amount of open space that needed people to populate. These people needed to be primarily of the lower end of the spectrum. As I pointed out in previous segments, the alien sequentials always look for low-end people to manipulate. The sequentials were behind the Samaramis statue with her flame of the Illuminati. These icons illuminate the plan of the sequentials on Earth. However, they cover this up with the local riffraff by telling them that these icons stand for liberty and freedom. While the riffraff believe this, they are being deceived. Once they believe this, they can be controlled. All the Darksiders in Washington have to do is drag out the liberty and freedom icons and, like the Pied Piper, the riffraff dance to their tune. Their belief is that it must be true since they are saying the right words. The riffraff fears knowing that it is any different than what Washington says it is. Yes, this is part of the endgame experience pattern, but it is to your advantage to know just what is going on and how the public is being manipulated. The American public has become so conditioned by this dark control that they tend to get highly offended when the lie is pointed out to them. During the 1930s to 40s, it was the Germanic people who were the superior ones. This was just a dress rehearsal for the American situation of today. Instead of basing superiority on a single ethnic group, something the Jews still insist on, you have a political unit consisting of many groups. Single ethnic group superiority, again except for the Jews, hmm, is bad. American stew pot superiority is good. You should be able to see the planetary sequentialization in that. In order to fall under the embrace of the sequentialized American group, you must bow to Washington. Yet, the nationalism of the Americans is equal to that of the Germans of last century. This will have to be eliminated in a sequentialized Earth. Sequentialization demands loyalty to the planet as a whole and not to any single regional political unit. But the American phase is just the latest in the sequentialization of Earth. Unlike the homogenous alien worlds where everyone is the same, reptilians on this world, siliconics on that world, humanish on another, Earthers, due to different alien groups' genetic manipulations, has elements of many different types of beings, excluding the silicoid and a few others. This is why it is necessary, from the sequential point of view, 
for Europeans to be overwhelmed by Asians and Africans. This is why the United States must have its base of Western European heritage smothered by Central-slash-South Americans, Asians, and others. The Western European base has been the strongest single unit on Earth for a long time due to their expansionist, reptilian, desires. Just as the reptilians conquer and form their empire, the Western Europeans did likewise and it is Western European traditions that overwhelmed other cultures. American culture is overwhelmingly Western European in flavor. Yet other sequential aliens are patrons to other ethnic areas of Earth. Yeah, I know, it's complicated. Your higher self has the full memories of the Galaxy game even though the incarnations do not. You can also access many facets of the game in the library on 27, if you wish. That there is so much going on now is part of the latter end game cycle. The muck gets increasingly muckier as the sequentials move to overpower the simultaneous in wanting to deny our path on Earth. America is not the good guy that it portrays to the world. It implies that all others are less. It says that if you do not toe the American philosophical lines that you are bad. This is why Major Darksider Von Bush said, you are either with us or against us. The sequential mindset lives for polarity and denies balance. While the bulk of American simultaneous path higher selves who live in America will buy the American superiority bullshit, those of the very advanced and awakened final incarnations will discover what is really going on. America can nuke whole cities and is considered good. America and its allies can bomb cities and kill people, considered bad by Washington, London, or Jerusalem, with impunity and that's fine. Yet when any American is killed, you get a three-act Chinese opera over it. Killing any American by a non-American is always bad. You see this in Israel as well. See how they are and what's going on? If not, you need to re-evaluate where you are in the state of your own awakening. The fascists in America, primarily the Republican Party, use fear and intimidation to attempt to keep the rest of the population in line with their empire building. Flags and control slogans are in abundance with them. They are darksiders with specific goals. Knowing this, what are you doing? If it is your path to participate, go for it. If it is your path to counter it, go for it. Whatever your path is, enjoy the experiences to the fullest. Endgame is here for all of us. Yet the graduation key is in place. You have all the keys that you need to spiral out of the game and graduate. That is the bottom line for the Earth or simultaneous path higher selves. The start of endgame, equality, and polaric racism. Warning. If you are body ID oriented, you should definitely not read this segment. It is too advanced for you to handle. The first public threat of endgame and sequential alien tampering with Earth came in the American Declaration of Independence with the phrase, all men are created equal. This just is not so unless you are on a sequential, alien planet where they are all created equal. Those who wrote that declaration were not your average people, but several had very strong ties to the planetary power structure, including Benjamin Franklin, who was one of the ring leaders. It was the creation of the idea of the United States illusion of equality that heralded the beginning of Endgame, even though the equality written in this document did not exist. That it was publicly acknowledged started the ball rolling. The setup was with the, the United States declaring this while still a slave-owning, Native American persecuting political unit. This equality was, and still is, an illusion, to move the Earth to a sequential path. First of all, refer back to Matrix V Gold Edition and segments dealing with who created Earthers of today. These are your physical body creators. As written in M5, these genetic scientists created specific races for specific reasons. One of the reasons was not equality. The black African race, for example, was created as a manual, heavy work labor force, primarily for mining. Other races were created for other purposes which were further modified by still other alien genetic scientists in ancient history. Equality was never the intent of the creators. On a simultaneous path planet, as Earth is for this galaxy at this time, the ways of equality are suspended to allow for maximum experiences and freedom of path expression. On sequential path planets in the rest of the galaxy, equality is standard in most respects since the planet progresses as a whole rather than as individuals. Even in the Orion Empire, those on Minteka will say the reptilians are equal in stature when compared to any other race or planet. Yes, the females rule but the males are still Orion reptilians and second only to their females. Other sequential planets have the males and the females as roughly PAR in abilities and positions, but then they progress as a unit slash planet and individuality is discouraged unless it can be applied to the planet as a whole. Earth, however, 
requires individual advancement. Progressing as a planet is not permitted since it is not simultaneous. The no one left behind attitude moving through American liberal circles is also sequential in idea. If one wants to progress as one of a group, stay on the excruciatingly slow sequential path. The aliens set it up here with different races. The simultaneous path took advantage of that end, hence, Earth became the simultaneous path planet after the last simultaneous path planet spirit spiraled out of the game. The sequential aliens found there was not anything serious that they could do after Earth was marked as simultaneous path planet until Endgame was opened. Endgame signaled the beginning of the spiraling out process after thousands of years of simultaneous, very varied experiences. When all men are created equal became public, it was the signal that the simultaneous higher selves were waiting for, the start of the breakdown of individuality and the need to look to spiraling out of the game as this session was coming to an end. The introduction of alien technologies and equality of genders were major parts of the dismantling of the simultaneous path on Earth. Again, refer back to Matrix V Gold Edition for more details. On Earth, not only are the physical bodies not created equal, the spirits that inhabit these bodies are not equal except in the case of minion incarnations. The fact of minion incarnations on Earth existing are also part of endgame and alien technological interference. Since we, as simultaneous incarnating higher selves, do incarnate at different time periods in nonlinear progression, our spirits are not equal in the time periods chosen. A very advanced living in ancient Greece is not equal to a low incarnation of another higher self living at the same time. This is never an issue among the higher selves. This, however, is an issue among sequential incarnates who envy the simultaneous pathers, but do not have the courage, at this time, to join that path. The joy of simultaneous incarnations is to be a female with unique female traits and duties that are vastly different than male, to experience the joys of one race and then another different one without the experiences being the same. During Endgame, these joys are rapidly being eliminated by the artificial status of equality. Notice how much has been taken away under the sequential path guise of equality and how rapidly the planetary rulers are attempting to force a one-planet attitude by combining Europe as one to copy the American experiment. There is much more to this than I've covered in this and other M5 segments. One other point I want to make here is about the polarity sides of racism. If you don't like anyone or have prejudices against a race only because that person belongs to the target race, you are a racist and have racist experiences. Dark polarity racism is prejudice slash dislike slash hatred to those of a race other than yours. Light polarity racism is prejudice slash dislike slash hatred of the race you currently are incarnated in. Dark polarity racism examples, white hates black, black hates white, yellow hates red, red hates brown and so on. Light polarity racism examples, white hates white, black hates black and so on. This polarity is sadistic slash masochistic. Adept Matrix 5 readers can connect the dots. Light polarity racism is most common today with whites prejudiced against their own race and cater to others at their own expense. The very advanced and higher know that they are in all races as different times. The very advanced do not look down on their race or others and do take people as individuals regardless of race. It is spirit connection to spirit that is most important. It is important to realize how the polarities are manipulating Earth into a sequential path to eliminate Earth as the simultaneous path planet of this galaxy. Think about these matters and see what conclusions you can draw. Post-publication segments on endgame events and reality. Alien slash wild cards, hard decisions slash questions in endgame. The Orion Empire intends to return to Earth with a massive display of power. What do you think that you will do? One or more alien groups come to Earth to say they want to save Earthers from either the Orion Empire or a natural disaster of massive proportions. What do you think that you will do? These are just a few of the wild cards possible to play during Endgame. Refer to Matrix V Gold Edition for more on that. Those who have read Matrix V Gold Edition have the information needed to understand where the aliens are coming from. They know why Earth has been Charont and which is in itself laughable since the aliens have been coming and going from here since before the ancient Earthers were split into genders. They know the significant differences between alien incarnating higher selves and Earther incarnating higher selves. They know some of the major game intents of both light and dark polarity aliens and how they both seek to deceive Earthers. Matrix V Gold Edition readers know these answers plus much more related to both the aliens and why we are here on Earth. Matrix V Gold Edition gives you the answers to the most asked questions that Earthers have had for ages. You readers now have the vital information that you need to assist you in making the hard decisions that will be required during Endgame. For example, if an alien group should arrive with their Ark to save us. 
Will you go with them or remain here? If the Orion Empire succeeds in their intention to overtly rule Earth, how will this change your outlook on the galaxy, the Earth, and your higher self's path for this current incarnation? If you know that a meteor or other global cataclysm will hit the Earth in three days, what will you do? Of course your current level of spiritual advancement and the number of experiential loops that still ensnare you come into consideration. You cannot alter one event in your higher self's path set by you before you entered this incarnation. Not one event in your higher self's path can be changed by any external sources, including even another higher self. If you have read Matrix V Gold Edition only once, you have not yet gotten everything out of it that will be invaluable to you. M5 opens your understanding in layers according to your level of advancement. However reading just once is the minimum needed to speed up your spiral out of the game and the return to your higher self. Read it again to reap more of the gold from the gold edition.